The game I made just has a working title of The Last Knight. It says the knight must move quickly to kill his former king. Press R to start. I play as the knight at the bottom and I'm up against all these queens and the king. When I move, I have two moves. At the end of my second move, the queens will move. Uh, I have to move before the progress bar at the bottom reaches zero. And then uh, when the queens move, if they're able to kill the knight, they will kill the knight. So the game is actually extremely difficult. It's uh, almost impossible to get past level two, I think, because after the board is randomized twice, uh, the queens are just impossible to get past most of the time. So I found a little safe spot there. The queens don't always move because their movement is randomized. They pick a random spot on the board, and if it's viable, then they'll move there. And if they detect that they can take uh, the player character of the knight, then they'll do that. Uh, but it is very difficult to get across to the king. Um, I, oh, there was an example in there. I am able to kill the queens, uh, but usually that's pretty difficult to do as well. Uh, they, all, they all spawn at, kind of at random. I think it's a 5% chance that they'll spawn on a tile, uh, but that's the game. So I made this in two hours, and it started as a one-hour challenge. I extended it to two hours just because at the end of the first hour I was having a lot of fun, and I thought there was a lot more I could do. Honestly, I should probably extend it again sometime and maybe work on it over a weekend. And I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as I go through the development. So like I said, I started with uh, one hour. And I thought that that would be enough time. I thought I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to make. It kind of started with this idea of just a, a grid, a chess grid. And I knew I wanted to play as a knight. Um, and I just kind of followed that. I found a really cool pixel art set uh, for chess pieces on itch.io uh, under the assets category and I'll put a link in the description to those assets down below and I'd encourage you to check those out because they were great and they made the project look a lot better than than it would have if I had made them myself. Most of the stuff I did in the beginning was you know very boilerplate just create a new project and start putting a color rectangle background and I, I left that in the in the video because I, I wish I had not done that because I actually lost a lot of time I probably lost 15 to 20 minutes because the color rectangle was messing up the collision somehow for my tiles. Uh, I ended up adding a collision shape to the individual tiles on the grid, and it was supposed to detect when I was clicking them so that I would be able to check the position, make sure that it was a valid position for the knight to move to. And I don't know what, I still don't know what the problem was, but the color rectangle was just messing that whole situation up. So I ended up taking the color rectangle out and just changing the project background color to white, uh, and that fixed everything. So. Uh, I use a font. I use a font from Google. Uh, it's VT323. Uh, I like it a lot. It's very pixelated, um, but it's not so overly blocky. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but I like that. I use Google Google fonts a lot for for the for the fonts that I use in some of these projects. That was me adding the collision shape to the tile, and now I'm just uh, getting the movement down for the night. The initial movement. Uh, it's really fun to work with chess mechanics just because there is a lot of validity checking where you're just kind of doing some, just a math, I don't know. I, I made a chess engine a while back and I worked through a lot of this logic, uh, but I'm just kind of throwing together something pretty hacky here where I'm just checking basically the two possible ways. It's either, it's either two over and one up or down, or it's two up or down and one over. It, basically just check those two those two outcomes. I realize there may be some people watching that don't even know the rules to chess, so I, you know, this may not make a lot of sense to you, but uh, essentially the knight moves in an L shape, whereas the queen that I'll be fighting uh, against can move horizontally, vertically, and diagonally, uh, infinitely, as long as there's room. So here I am setting up the timer for the progress bar at the bottom. I kind of started with the idea of just five seconds. Uh, you have five seconds to move, and then if you if you don't move within five seconds, the game's over. Uh, I'll end up in the video extending that technically, I guess, to 10 seconds in some way, just because you get two moves. Uh, and that was just because the game was just impossible with just one move. But originally it was you would move the knight, and then the queens would move, uh, but that was just impossible. I, I'm showing the timer because this was how far I got at the end of the first hour. Uh, I did have what I would call a working game because there was a win condition. Uh, you could you could capture the king and there was a game over condition or, or a lose condition in which the timer would, would go out. Uh, so you could win and you could lose. But uh, like I said in the beginning, I, I just had so much more I wanted to do and I needed at least one enemy for this to be an actual game. 
the original idea was to not use the queens because I knew the queens would be a little overpowered. I wanted to use bishops, rooks, and pawns and leave the knight and queen out of it uh, just so that there would be a little more strategy. You know, the rooks can only move horizontally and vertically. The bishops can only move diagonally. And I thought that having more limitations with the enemies by using those individual ones, uh, there would just be more strategy. You wouldn't feel like you were getting harassed by 15 queens the whole level. Uh, so, and I still think that that was the right choice. I just decided to go with the queen just for the sake of the challenge because I knew that maybe that would be the easiest to implement. So if I revisit this or if I keep working on this a little bit, I will definitely, I'll probably get rid of the queen and I'll add in the bishop, the rook, and the pawn. And I, I think that'll make the game a lot more a lot more fun in the sense of actually feeling like you have control over your fate. This is me just setting up the spawning function for the for the queens. Basically just step through the whole grid and then uh, there's, I don't know what it starts as, but basically it ends as a 5% chance that the queen will spawn as long as it's not on the, the spot where the knight or the king are. So they can't spawn on the same position as those. Uh, but this was when I first got the queen spawning working. Uh, the board's obviously full of queens because there's a 30% chance that they will spawn. And I moved into checking the queen's movement. Basically, whenever you move the knight, you call that function on line 63, move enemies. And it steps through all the enemies in a list. And for each enemy, it picks a random position on the board. And then it just checks if that position is, is movable for the... Uh, for the enemy. I would have to make something a lot more complicated for bishops, pawns, and rooks because they don't have as much room to move as the queens because with the queens they have so much control over the board that uh, if you just call a random position there's a very good chance that they can move there because they have so much coverage but for a pawn there's only two spots that they can move to so in a way maybe the pawns would be easier to move. I'm not sure. So this is me just spending a little bit of time close to the end setting up the intro page uh, or the intro scene and I kept it very simple just pulled in some of the queen sprites and press R to start. I played through a couple levels and uh, that's the game. I don't know. That was the end of two hours. This is basically right at two hours that I finished this. Uh, if, you, if you hit game over you can press R to restart the game. I'd love to do more challenges like this and maybe stick to just the first hour uh, but as far as this game specifically I definitely want to expand on this in the future. I think it's a lot of fun. If you want to play it. Uh, there'll be a link in the description. I'll put it on itch.io and you can play it in the browser. I'll put a link to the GitHub also where you can check out the source code for this project and also a link to the asset pack that I used for these sprites because I, I appreciate being able to get that very much. So I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.